series in the future and to provide you with the kinds of things that, that are most helpful. And also, we're going to begin recording this on our YouTube channel. So if you're not able to stay for the entirety of the program today, or you want to make it available to a friend or someone else, that'll be there as well. And so now it is my pleasure to introduce to you Susan Rogers. She is the community liaison for certified elder law attorney John McNear. John is the only practicing attorney in Dallas County who has earned the National Elder Law Foundation's Certified Elder Law Attorney designation. Susan focuses on building relationships with senior living communities, elder care agencies, senior service organizations, and elders and their families. After earning a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Connecticut and a master's degree in gerontology from the University of North Texas, Susan spent over 20 years working closely with elders and their families in independent living, assisted living, memory care, and skilled nursing facilities. She is a longtime volunteer with the Greater Dallas chapter of the uh, Alzheimer's Association. She has served as a walked-in Alzheimer's chairperson on various committees and boards and is a speaker representing the association. Susan has served on the board of the Dallas Area Gerontology Society since 2016 and also serves as program chair for the DFW chapter of the National Placement and Referral Agency uh, Alliance. Susan is a member of the Down Syndrome Guild of Dallas. Susan's education and experience make her an ideal speaker on any topic related to seniors and elders care. Susan's presentations are approved for social work uh, continuing education. And so we are, I am privileged to introduce her and she's going to introduce our two presenters today. And one quick last word before she does, uh, one of the gentlemen she's going to introduce, Robbie, is one of the newest board members with the Dallas Area Parkinsonism Society. So Susan, I turn it over to you. Wonderful, thank you so much for that very um, generous uh, introduction there. And um, I am honored to be here and to be introducing these two speakers today. Um, they are part of a group to which we all belong called Synectus. And Synectus is a collaborative group of professionals serving in a variety of roles with uh, senior adults. And we work together uh, to collaborate and ensure that our clients um, have kind of a one-stop shop so they don't have to uh, keep searching for other, um, other people that can help them with various aspects of the things that they're, the challenges they're dealing with. Um, and so we are honored to work together to present these presentations. And I'm going to uh, introduce Robbie first. Uh, Robbie McCullough is um, a, a veteran of uh, the insurance industry for many years. And he has now um, switched uh, gears and he is the owner of Assisting Hands Personal Care Service. He is a strong advocate for his clients and ensuring that they receive the best care and the best quality of life um, in their homes. Um, and our other speaker who was gonna start us off is Jeff Court. And Jeff is a certified financial planner, professional. Um, he focuses on helping his clients plan for trans transitions from career changes, sending kids to college, retirement, all of those. As a fiduciary, Jeff puts his clients first and personally customizes financial solutions to achieve specific personal objectives. Um, he is born in Kansas City and has been here in Dallas for the past 20 years. And so I will turn the time over to Jeff and Robbie at this time. Again, we welcome your questions uh, and um, we'll look forward to answering those. Thank you, Susan. Uh, can you hear me okay? Thumbs up if so. Excellent, wonderful. Thank you for the introduction. I don't always get uh, the whole page of everything that I've done and where I am and, and where I'm going, but it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys today. My name is Jeff Cord, as, as Susan shared, and I'm going to present this uh, set of insights that comes to me from in co collaboration with the Hartford Funds 
and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, Technology Lab. And the MIT lab uh, is going to talk about, is going to share some of the insights that are there and, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how they got to where they are. So if we look at the, this first slide, we look at a picture of Henry Ford, the, uh, the importance of Mr. Ford as a, a technologist and as an inventor and somebody who was, was doing quite a bit is a really important uh, thing to remember that we have to keep our, our minds young and ourselves active. And that's for all of us who are presenting, who are listening, what have you. And it comes through in the MIT Age Lab as we see uh, the marketing organization, the, those who are in business, the business school are looking from a marketing perspective. How do we help folks that way? From those who are in the in the medical field, or how does how do these pains or or changes in our life make uh, impacts to us? And so, what you see here is a picture of. Oh, if you'll go forward, Susan. Sorry. And what you see here is a picture of two students uh, in the Age Lab who are working with uh, folks in the School of Business to see how an aging person might feel differently and how they would feel and, and be able to uh, uh, transport themselves to make, to make themselves comfortable as they move along uh, through what they're doing. So you see on this imagery, it looks like they're wearing Crocs. Those shoes uh, are resembling what might be for a, diabe a diabetic, that they're the tingling or the pain on the bottom of their feet, they're feeling that. You see a yellow strap which is pulling their back down and, and making it a little harder for them to walk, which happens to us as we age. You see the same thing up top uh, with some pulling our neck down and, and moving it forward. You see uh, quite a bit of that and that testing goes on uh, through all different areas. Companies uh, like CVS, we talked a little bit about that maybe before we started that CVS is handling uh, the vaccines right now. Well, CVS also is figuring out how do I help seniors in my stores better that we've seen from the MIT Age Labs work, the widening of aisles and the lowering of aisles so that folks can reach and have easier accessibility as they go through. Uh, so it's not just about financial services, it's how it's about we, we do what we wanna do and live our ways with technology. So go to the next slide. Thank you. So there's three pieces I'm gonna talk about. The first piece is about what's that new future look like for us? The second piece is about the types of technology that can maybe help us change with what we're doing. And the third thing is about how we'll recap and figure out what we can try to do and, and figure out just what we want that fits within it. So let's start with, with what does that new future look like? You can change the slide as sort of a transitional one. Um, what we have here is a picture of uh, a person who uh, I'm, gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna call her grandma. She's, uh, she's gonna figure out how she handles her day with all kinds of apps and Susan's going to start it and unfortunately you're not going to get to see how it how it goes so I'm going to kind of narrate it so as I see what she's doing I'll explain it fair enough so grandma lives by herself to start with so she's got to figure out everything for herself and that's fine and in reality when she does that she's figured it out because she's using technology so she doesn't have to change her light bulbs anymore. She uses apps for that. She's hung up her car keys. She's not driving anymore. Right now we're seeing her uh, figuring out where she's gonna go. So she doesn't drive. So she's gonna Uber or Lyft to go get some ice cream cones with her kids, uh, her grandkids. Uh, she uses her smartphone to use the app to find Uber or Lyft. And she's able to do that. If she actually saw a light turn on, that's why all she's gone. She doesn't even make a kick on that. In her morning, when she get her day starts, her smartphone wakes her up, and it does it with a light uh, phase to wake her up carefully, and it tells her that the coffee maker can automatically start to help her out. If she has trouble, she has an app called Care Beacon that helps watch what, what uh, if she falls. She uses a, a app called Stylebee that helps with hair uh, hairstyling in the house. Pillboxy is a way to get all the, the pills that she's going to need. She's being monitored for her heart rate, her blood pressure. Now she's ready for lunch, and so she's gonna figure out if she's using Uber or Lyft, which one's faster for her. Turns out it was Uber, so she's gonna go have lunch with her friends, and she meets them, and she's out there, probably not during COVID time, but she can count her calories with an app called Calorie Counter, 
Now they're talking about maybe traveling, probably not in COVID, but that's all right. Now she's going back to go visit her grandchildren and she chooses Lyft because that's closer. Heads over to see the grandchildren. Um, I don't know what that's about, but she's finished her day with the grandkids and she comes in and unfortunately the doorknob broke. So she's gonna use an app called Dag Nabbit and she, excuse me, called Task Rabbit to, to fix that. Uh, she uses Spotify, which is an app that turns on her music and plays it the way she wants. She's getting food delivered to her house. That's apps like a, a Peapod or a Blue Apron. She had uh, the, the, task, the task rabbit fix it. There's also laundry delivered, which is all via app from Washio. And now she's getting ready to read an ebook and put her uh, alarm up for the next mor morning. And she's going to be able to safely sleep with ice cream cones in her head. It's a really cute little uh, video if you got to hear it for 60 seconds. Uh, and I'm sure it's not that I didn't do it the, the justice, but I was trying to follow uh, those pieces. And I know there are lots and lots of apps that help with that. Uh, so good for them. Let's go to the next slide and, and uh, we'll go forward. The key that we have that's really exciting in, in, in technology perspective is that we have an expectation that we're gonna live a lot longer than we did before and we wanna live as, as well as we can. And so we need to think about that and we wanna make sure that we're doing the best that we can with what we have. We've seen that um, when we reach age 65, we have a likelihood of over 70% that we're gonna have a period of time when we need service or help. And so technology can help with us, help us with that, just like we saw from grandma's perspective. Um, when we think about uh, how well seniors know and, and use apps, it's way behind what youngsters are, but it's not a difficult piece and it's not something we can't handle. So we wanna make sure that we're engaging and learning and feeling comfortable with these types of activities. And uh, so I wanna see that you're picking out one or two inside here. Susan, if you'll go to the next slide, that'll be good. Um, this is a, a, a slide that talks about IOT or the internet of things. And you may already know what that is. Some folks don't know what it is or what it's called and you don't have to, it's a pretty simple term, the internet of things. But the premise of it is that everything is synced together uh, via uh, Wi-Fi or net cellular network so that we can know what's happening with uh, all of our appliances, with our cars, with our services. And by doing that, by connecting everything over the internet, the internet can track what's going on so we know if issues occur and if, and if we have opportunities and we can make alerts and, and put that out there. Uh, so IoT is a very simple term. It's a very complex set of activities that go on. Um, and some folks don't like to be watched by Big Brother, but I'm gonna tell you, whether you wanna be on the grid or not, you're on the grid. And so let's take advantage of it. Let's push to the next slide. What types of technology can help us with life change? What does life changing mean? Well, I shared in that picture with grandma, she doesn't change her light bulbs anymore. She doesn't do her own homework. So who will change my light bulb is all about how do I make sure that my home and the things that I need to do and take care of on my own in here are able to be done. Maybe that's on my own. Maybe it's with apps that make it automated. Maybe it's with bringing in people to do those things for us, but so that we don't feel or worry that we're isolated and can't do the things we need to do. That's an important thing that we, that we want to make sure of. The middle one, it's a great image. How will I get an ice cream cone? That's all about transportation, right? Um, if I can't get it for myself, I can't even get to the grocery to bring it here, how do I do that? Well, apps that bring groceries to our door are now not uncommon at all. Um, I, my parents both use uh, uh, apps that do that, and it's wonderful. Uh, I have been amazed by it. When, when milk comes in, it's uh, two days from expiration, they call, they say, finish it up and we'll have another one for you out in eight hours. Um, so I don't have to get out to do that. On the other side, if I need to get out, I shared from that video a picture of Uber and Lyft and there's others uh, out there, uh, ride sharing apps that, that are out there for, for many folks. And so it's how we get there will be an important thing so that we feel comfortable and we don't feel isolated. The third one about who will I have lunch with is also about isolation, but it's not 
so much that I'm worried I can't do anything. It's about how do I make sure I have a community and that I'm getting there and I'm being engaged with it. Maybe I'm not able to get out of my house. So can I use video or apps that help me to do that? And so that's what we're gonna go through in the next few slides. Susan, if you'll go to the next one for us. If I'm going to, to be connected and making sure I can do all these things, I may want to stay on the job. That keeps my mind sharper. I might take other classes that help me get those, uh, keep myself sharp in, in what I'm doing. I might also realize that I want to do something else. I might have spent 30 years doing one job and now I want to do something else. And so the opportunities for us now are dramatic. There are a whole lot more seniors out there who want to work, who feel comfortable working, uh, who feel comfortable working in a community, or who feel comfortable working only from home. And technology offers that ability and opportunity. Uh, I, you know, call center, I, uh, call center folks uh, are jobs that you sit, you have to go to a place, you'd sit with a bunch of people, even post COVID, even pre COVID time, it had already become a home-based job and you can help and do anything you wanted to. And you can do that for, for many years and it's important. And so knowing the technology that can help us keep on that job and do that from home is a very valuable piece. Let's go to the next one. And when we're staying on the job, can we enjoy that? And the reality for that is that many people don't want to be done working at 65. I, I recall uh, several of my clients who said, look, I don't know what I'm going to do when I turn 65 if I'm done working. So, okay, so then why, in two cases, you own the company, why would you stop? Well, my kids are thinking I should. You should do what's important for you and what makes it valuable for you. And you should enjoy what you're doing on that job. And if you're not enjoying it, but you're working for somebody else, there are lots and lots of other jobs that you could do. Uh, and, and finding those are important. We've seen Pre-COVID, we saw there were a very low level of unemployment, and so there was a need for seniors, even greater than, than today, to help fill in on many jobs. Um, but even in post-COVID space, as the economy grows back up and it's heating up uh, pretty strongly right now, we see new jobs and, and new requirements that are out there for folks. In fact, if we go to the next slide, this is one that I love very much. I, I got rid of my car uh four years ago now three years ago now uh on not a, i can still drive i drive I, I have two kids and, and a wife and there's three cars in our four four person household we just don't need four cars uh so i was going to try out and see how it worked and i use uber and lyft to get around and uh and it's worked very well for me and it's much less expensive because if i'm ride sharing and only using a car when i need it it's less expensive uh, on a on a daily basis but the other thing that's been awesome is that I meet wonderful, uh, interesting people. I've been picked up in a Mercedes. I've been picked up in a Cadillac. I've been picked up in a Suburban. Uh, they're all very mannerly. If I don't want to talk to them, I can put my earbuds in. If I want to have a conversation, it's wonderful. Uh, I worked for Sprint for 25 years before I retired in the finance side there and, and decided I still want to do something, so I'm doing that. While I was on an Uber about a year and a half ago, the gentleman who created the first wireless cellular tower, the engineer who built that, he picked, up, picked me up in a beautiful silver Mercedes that was not even a year and a half old. And it was in wonderful uh, condition. And, and I think I paid $7 for a ride that was like five miles away. And I had the, the greatest conversation. It was very interesting. I love that. So that's a wonderful opportunity. Other times, when I want to talk to folks, I might be on a 30-minute drive downtown. I can do my work while I'm in there, which I couldn't do work while I was driving. At least I shouldn't be, and I wasn't. So that was an important piece. Uh, the ability for us to get that quickly and, and share it is awesome. And Airbnb, if you're not familiar, there are several apps out there, uh, VRBO, Verbo, uh, that helps you find places for vacationing. And that's a wonderful thing uh, that we can do for, uh, for ourselves to ensure our life satisfaction, but this idea that all of these companies are working internet-based, uh, phone call-based in and out, uh, you could do that, make that calls, and help the, the scheduling. And that's a wonderful space to provide transportation and vacation, et cetera. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a really important one. I love this. Um, 
I, when I finished my schooling in 1988 at Indiana University, I remember telling uh, my parents that I was never going to get another degree and I wasn't going back to college and being a CPA would be just fine. I'm, I'm, I'm all good with that. I don't need any more than that. Five years later, I went back and got my MBA. Ten years after that, I went back and got my CFP. I recognize that I don't know everything. And when I was 22, I, even though I thought I knew everything, I didn't. And I enjoy learning. You don't have to enjoy all of learning. I don't particularly enjoy watching uh, operations in the, in the surgeon's room uh, that, that gets videoed. If I have clients who provide that kind of instruction to them, that's kind of cool. And what's, what's important to you or what's valuable to you is valuable. But the idea that you could continue to learn on things that you're interested in and want to know, that's wonderful. So there are what are called MOOCs, Massive Online Open Courses. That's where someone from Harvard or someone from Yale who's been teaching this for 30 years and has mastered economics or, uh, or uh, social history or what have you, they teach that course and you're allowed to get on there for free and hear what they're learning, what they're teaching, and you get to learn it. Uh, those are beautiful things. Um, I love that very much. I also love uh, other apps that, that do that. There's lots of education apps that are listed below it, uh, but the big one in the center that's called YouTube, uh, I thought, I don't need to use that. My kids like that. I'm going to stay away from what my kids use. My goodness, I've seen so much great education in YouTube, and uh, my kids see so much funny that, that I probably don't think it's funny, but once in a while I do, and I'm glad they share that with me. So there are lots and lots of apps that are free for you to use, to experience, and see where you're going. And keeping our skills sharp and learning and continue to learn on all the time is a valuable space. On the, the right side, the, the little person with that is that podcast, and so that we can understand and keep things going from a volume perspective for us and, and hearing and doing what we want. If you'll go to the next slide for me, I'm going to pass this a little bit different uh, off of you know, the apps that were, were helping us individually, but I wanna talk about apps that really are helping us with the person-to-person -person space. And in this last year, COVID has been a really big deal and it's really jumped up what we're doing. The fact that we're on Zoom today. Well, I would have loved to have been in person with you guys and have physical communication, but I feel pretty good about the fact that at least I get to share the message and I'm hopeful that you're enjoying it. And if you have questions along the way, that we can be more interactive through that. And that's the kind of things that we have. The, the app Zoom uh, that we're using today was, it existed two years ago, but not much more than that. And uh, as a financial advisor, I help folks with investment choices. Uh, those who took, I don't usually uh, tell folks about individual stocks, but those people who chose Zoom, Zoomed up their wealth very quickly because it became, became used all over the place every school and they offered it for free and then they started charging and they're able to charge more and more and it's still valuable. But what you're seeing in this picture is someone who's living on her own, but she can still do just a video conference with a camera on the, on the laptop. That's what I'm using today as well, the same thing. And so even though I'm not physically there, I don't feel isolated. Um, if I needed to see a doctor, uh, in fact, uh, I, I found out that my prescription, I have celiac and I need to make sure that my gluten-free is not an issue. So uh, I, I'm about two months late on, a, on the appointment. They called and reminded me I needed that. And I said, okay, do I have to come in? And they said, no, we're not doing any visits in. We're gonna do a teledoc appointment. I took 15 minutes and I have my prescription and I'm okay. Now, is it the same as you know him seeing me or, or the doctor being able to, see everything. No, it's not, but it's pretty darn good, pretty darn close, and that's awesome. Let's go on forward and let's talk about how the social aspect can be inside there. You didn't get to see the video of, <laughs> of Grandma, but you're going to get to see another video that I'll have to share with you. It's called Connected Living, and what it is is it's involved in retirement communities, and what it allows is the ability for those who are not in the community to see friends and family in the community and vice versa. So when mobile technology is from our cell phone or from a, 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 a device that will, will provide that monitor like the Facebook shadow, uh, that allows you to stay connected and have that discussion. And this is a chance where grand, 
grandpa and grandson are able to communicate about what's going on in their lives. And that might be a really small screen, like a phone. And for a kid, that's fabulous. For an adult, they may be good with that, but they might be using like a big pad or tablet. And it doesn't just have to be the two of them communicating, right? It can be we're sharing the same uh, activity or story that we're doing at the same time. And that's a wonderful uh, activity that's going on. Being able to see if you're a parent and your parent is in a community and being able to see what's going on in that community for safety and uh, is it really looking nice? That's another very valuable thing. And uh, boy, all the communities know that's going on now. So they're upping their game to make sure that's there. And I'm sure many communities are already uh, we're already doing that. I'm not trying to say they were in a bad space, but that's really beautiful. Let's go to the next app that talks about ways to stay connected. So that was one, connected living. Skype is a video conferencing app application uh, that you see above there as well. It's been going on for, gosh, almost 10 years. Uh, so you could video one-to-one -one with each other. Facebook, which is a social media site where you can post and see how everybody's doing. When it started, uh, everybody posted all their wonderful things, and none of their bad things. So it felt like all of us were perfect and what a wonderful life we have. But gosh, that feels good. So if I'm reading a little Facebook and, it, and oh, it's his 78th birthday and he's running a mile, good for you, that's wonderful. Uh, or Facebook Messenger allows you to now start communicating one-to-one -one and, and be, uh, be able to do that just socially without even having to talk to each other, which youngsters don't enjoy as much. Uh, these are all, each of these is an app that do those kinds of things. Uh, my grandmother, uh, I have one grandmother still around and she's on Snapchat to see my daughter's pictures that she shares. Uh, my mother is on Snapchat to see what my, uh, my daughter is, is sharing. The app on the bottom right corner, I won't, I mean, I did not hit all of them too hard, but I want to this one. I call it WhatsApp. Um, and I did that for about 10 years, no, five or six years, however long it's been around. And I found out that it's pronounced, what's up? Um, and it's, it was the first great international uh, texting space. So it was free, you could use, uh, you could do dial from there and make phone calls. So audio calls, not video, but you could text with each other and carry communications uh, nicely. It was a, a wonderful space. I have a client who's in Brazil and, uh, 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 it was not even five months ago that he told me that the app, he said, he made fun of me. He said, you know, the app is called WhatsApp, not WhatsApp. I'm like, well, what? It's the app. What's going on? So you can't, you, can't get, you can't make this stuff up, Jeffrey. I know. It's the way it goes. All right, let's go to the next slide. This is about, and I shared a little bit about Uber, but this is about mobile. And I shared that I don't drive anymore. And I did that on purpose as a test for my family and also as a test so that I could be a better communicator about this with folks. Um, let me just give a picture for a second. If I was gonna, and I'm not, we're not gonna be driving Mercedes or all that. Let's say it was just a Honda Accord. That's a mid-level car. Let's say it costs $30,000. If I split that across 60 months, that's $500 a month just to pay for the car. That's if I was able to spread it over 60 months and I don't have any interest on it and I've got a nice new car and five years later, it's still in pretty good shape. 500 bucks a month. I also have to pay for the gas for it. Let's call that 50 bucks a month. I also have to pay insurance for that. Let's call that 100 bucks a month, maybe 50 bucks. Let's drop it down. Let's make it really cheap. So we're at 600 bucks just for the car, the, the gasoline and the insurance. What else do I do with it? Well, in Dallas, we drive on tolls. I, I heard Alicia say, share that she comes out from McKinney and she can get here in less than 30 minutes in a big city, that's great, but there's tolls on that. So we pay for that. In addition to that, there's maintenance once in a while. Even if I only drive 5,000 miles a year, I'm changing my oil once or twice. So let's say we've got another 50 bucks for that. Um, there's a lot of expenses that come there. Let's put it even conservatively at 650, but I would say you usually spend about 800 bucks a month on your car in some way, shape or form and what's going on. That's not, that's not a small amount. If my average Uber ride is 20 bucks and it's not, mine is more like 10 bucks or less because um, I stay in my community. But if it was uh, 20 bucks or more, I would have 40 rides a month without ever coming close to that 800 bucks. 
So there's some value of what's going on there. So even if I don't feel like I'm comfortable in the car or all the time, having that choice is a nice piece inside. Of it. Let's go to the next slide. When we look at it, many people stopped driving because they thought they couldn't anymore. What we've seen in the last few years uh, is that the Wi-Fi that's going on uh, across the highways and across the roads can tell if your white line, if you're inside the white lines or not, if you're crossing over the orange line. When you see the commercials, and we've seen tons of cars, commercials for, you know, up for the, the New Year's end, where they're trying to sell them so cheap at the last minute, not particularly that much cheaper, uh, but they were showing how you have lane assist, and the woman has a commercial, she takes a french fry out of the guy's picture, uh, out of his car, while the, the truck would have crashed into him. Those are actual capabilities that happen all the time. My son is a senior in college, and he drives a uh, RAV4, uh, and when he drives uh, a distance, he tries to to impact the lane assist to, to see how much it will, it will affect it, and it's really impressive. I'll go to one more slide up. So this is the types of technologies that have started to come into place. I shared that uh, this was partially, uh, the, the MIT Age Lab research was partially sponsored by Hartford Fund, so their name is on there. Uh, they're not the only insurance company that's providing these kinds of things. They're not the only, and all the manufacturers are really doing this now. Uh, we saw commercials in the summer of this past year from Hyundai and from Kia that had a uh, blind spot warning, lane departure warning, the Nissan Sentra, the lowest level of, of the Nissan vehicle, and all of these things are there and they're not expensive and they're not hard. Tesla really helped advance this quite a bit. Um, you don't have to buy a $70,000 car to have these capabilities. And those capabilities are really just being able to position and know where we are and make sure that we're keeping folks safe. So it works very well and it's very nice. Let's uh, go to the next slide. I talk a, not a little bit, but a lot about transportation because I want us to know and feel comfortable and confident that it's okay to spend dollars uh, in our budget to get out and about. It's also okay to spend dollars for technology so that I don't have to get out when I don't want to. But I want you to know that from a picture perspective, when we look at it as a financial advisor and a planner, if I tell folks, uh, what are you spending your most money dollars on? The first thing is housing, right? You want to have a place, you want to be comfortable that you're spending most of your time there. And the second biggest expense is transportation. So I want to make sure you're still able to do that and feel comfortable spending those dollars that it will cost about 15% of your income for that. And maybe that means you're not going to go out 40 times a month. Maybe it means you go 30 times a month. That's still plenty of getting out and about. And car, car sharing is also a wonderful piece inside. That. Let's go to the next slide. And I shared a little bit about what a cost is inside there. The cost of staying mobile is much less than you think. Um, I'm embarrassed to say this. I have a sister-in-law who moved to, um, uh, up, she, was, she was an international worker and she was living in Chile for uh, four years. And last year, her and her husband are back up in DC. They work for the government. And uh, down in Chile, they could Uber or Lyft. Uh, and down there, nobody tips. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh. And I started talking to my friends up here. A lot of people don't tip in America for Uber and Lyft. I'm, I'm giving a public service announcement here. Um, those folks are driving, they don't get paid. Less than half of the, 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 the fee that you get paid. Uh, they rely on tips and, and need that. But a dollar is wonderful. I mean, I, I love the idea of 15 or 20 percent, but even if you just tip a dollar to that, you can do that. And I just want to share that piece of it. And it will still be less expensive even with that dollar or two added in there. So I shared what, what the cost of a large sedan is according to AAA three years ago. So inflation has clearly gone up just a bit, but expectation for just a large sedan, not a special car, nearly $11,000, nearly $1,000 a month. I shared with you not even $800 uh, uh, that I'm spending, not even $600 I'm spending. In fact, I didn't tell you exactly, pardon me. I said if I would have done 40, that would be the case. I have not spent over $450 in a month when I'm Ubering. Now, 
I will recognize that I do sometimes uh, use my wife's car or my child's car. And if I'm going to be on two or three appointments in a day, or I'm going to go out and about, I will rent a car for the day. I do include those dollars in what I what, what adds up to the 450. So if I was going to go 20 miles away, or if I've got a breakfast and a lunch appointment, I would I would rent a car for the day, and that's a, a wonderful way to make it work. All right, let's go to the next one, and let's get off of transportation, and let's get to the point where we're talking about other apps that will let us not have to transport ourselves. At the beginning, you saw Grandma got these boxes. One was from Peapod and one was from Blue Apron. If you hadn't seen or heard of those before, it's like a grocery, uh, but they're giving you the, the, the uh, ingredients for what you're gonna make, uh, and they give you the instructions on how to do that as well. Let's say you don't want that. You just wanna get the food. Grubhub allows that. HelloFresh allows you to uh, pick the right fresh foods that are there. Uber Eats says you order what you want and bring it to me. Grubhub says you order what you want and they'll bring it to you. Um, and that's kind of cool. So those apps, uh, I'm just sharing a few of them, allow you to do that. What if I wanted a Lyft to get out there or I choose Lyft or Uber Eats to bring it to me? Fabulous. On the right side, we've got virtual reality. Um, and this is really interesting to me. I like this a lot. I didn't like it to start with, but I do. The idea, I can't, if I can't get out anymore, can I see what I wanted to see? A client of mine passed away in uh, August of this year at 94. At 92, no, excuse me, 93, uh, she had her last trip. And she said at 92, that would be her last trip. But at 93, she was still able to take one more trip. She went uh, to Amsterdam and saw all the, oh shoot, the type of flower that it is that they all, Two, yeah, thank you, the tulips. And she was so excited and she got on and off the boat and she walked across the locks at 93, at 93 years old. Awesome. But if she couldn't, the visual, the visual reality that you have through discovery or VR or you visit gives you the ability to feel like you're there. It, I love that. And um, I'll share another piece that's to it that's not an app that's even on here and I'm not making a plug for Disney but my son wanted the Disney Plus app. And the first show we saw was the story of Serengeti and how the elephants uh, make their, their path and, tra and travel to and from it. Oh my gosh, I, what, I really felt like I was there. And it was amazing. So don't, don't short yourself the ability to see that travel as it goes. All right, I've shared a lot of time and, uh, and Robbie's given me that, that signal that says it's his turn. And I want to show several apps and let him show apps in the house that you might use. And I'm going to be quiet. Whew. Anybody tired? I need an app. I know Jeffrey does. I'm kidding. All right. So um, I own a home care, like Mike mentioned earlier, I'm a home care agency. So we take care of seniors in a lot of locations, but primarily at home. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can keep your dad, mom, grandma, grandpa, a loved one safe at home using technology, things like Alexa or uh, Google, those kind of things. So really, literally, uh, I use four or five smart devices in my home. My mother-in-law calls me at least a couple of times a week asking to turn the temperature up to a three degrees, which I can do while I'm sitting in my office or with a client. So uh, those kind of things really can enhance, uh, one, safety primarily, two, comfort and those kind of, and be able to stay advised of what's going on with a senior that might be declining a little bit, but needs a little extra help. So the technology, and it's becoming easier and easier, I believe, to be able to incorporate these things into your home. So it's pretty powerful. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those, lights, air conditioner, TV, thermostat, those kind of things. Jeffrey, or Susan, Susan, you're driving, right? All right, so here's a couple of other things. I mentioned Alexa, the top left, there's a small one, a tall one, I've got three in my house, thermostats, refrigerators, uh, you have a robo, um, a vacuum cleaner, robo, um, that's a Google Drive as well. All these are potential devices that you can use to assist, um, uh, you know, you and your loved ones while you may not be there, but be able to help. It's like you're there using technology. Roomba is the vacuum cleaner. And then the top right is an AI pet to encourage the stimulation, to remove as much isolation as possible. Many surveys and COVID's only made that way worse. Isolation is as detrimental as smoking. 
So giving that little bit of interaction, even if it's an AI pet or virtual pet, like um, that's a seal, I believe. I've seen dogs and I've seen cats, that's a seal. So uh, it's really powerful. And they're actually, some of these are not that expensive. So you can do menus on your refrigerator, keep track of things, it's pretty powerful. All right, next slide, I wanna keep on track. And these are, just mentioned some of these, but these are more home-based, uh, not just going out, so delivery, Grubhub, Home Advisor is for repairs, Angie List is for repairs, Thumbtack, TaskRabbit, all of these things, pro.com, help people stay home, help a home stay up to date and safe for them, removing rugs, all those things that Susan knows as a gerontologist. And I see we have some other uh, care managers on the phone, on the call. So these are little things that make big differences in seniors as they age. Next. Okay, so this is one of my little favorites. Um, um, while I didn't go to uh, Indiana, and I'm not a Hoosier, I'm a Baylor Bear, so, uh, but I do love technology. Sick of that's right. So this is, uh, this is a whole new genre of uh, what the industry calls RPM, remote patient monitoring. So being able to track vital signs, O2, movements, those kind of things remotely uh, is really powerful. So if you have a loved one that has COPD or 100 other conditions, diabetics for butcher, whatever it might be, there's multiple apps and tools to be able to help monitor that on a 24 seven basis. Really powerful to be able to help uh, remotely help your loved one be safe and sound. So a change in blood sugar can obviously be very detrimental. There's tons of ways to do that. We could do a whole seminar. I think we are gonna build a seminar about this particular topic called remote patient monitoring. It's such a big deal, such a big deal that even stodgy old CMS Medicare now, if a physician orders pays for this kind of service at home or at a community or wherever, pretty powerful stuff. And I think that's only going to increase kind of like telehealth. All right, next. Uh, Jeffrey, I'm going to have you kind of, so these are all also, also remote uh, monitoring devices, a belt, a uh, coffee maker. You've got uh, a, a, a belt, you have an eyeglass, a, a remote. Uh, these are all functionality things you can add to your home to increase the functionality of your home. Um, all those kind of things for you. And I don't remember what the mirror is. Help me on that one, Jeffrey. Top right. Yeah, so that's, uh, it's, it's watching what you're doing. So you've got a better visibility of it. And then in addition to it, it's tracking what you're doing. So if something is, uh, is incorrect, that they'll help you offset it. And then you see the backward side of it. You see that they're able to, you're standing on something so they know who you are. So if you've got a change in weight or a change in blood pressure as that's going, you can see that a few times a day as well. The Got belt that. is also uh, knowing if you're falling or moving so you can be pulled back up and, and shared in tracking and, and what's going on Cool, there. awesome. Can we talk about pill boxy for a second? Yeah, as go well. ahead, once you hit that one. So there are uh, it, just one of several, but there are lots and lots of apps that will not just identify, you talk to the pharmacist on which medicines you need, but they will put them together so, Here's what you take Monday at 8 a.m. Here's what you take on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And so they come out and they dispense for you in the appropriate levels at the right times so that you get that. So you can be reminded of it. You know that you've got the, the quantity that you need and it's dispensed properly. And when they get low, because you're taking it the way they're supposed to, uh, they're being uh, replenished and sent to you automatically as well. So very important. So Good, you. all right, next. Next slide. And these are all uh, help. I'm wearing a Fitbit right there. Track your sleep, track your activity, all those kind of things. They're multiple different level. Home team helps deliver care there as well. Um, honor. All these are extra med coach. We just talked pill boxy. Uh, these are all additional services, prescriptions, medical, telehealth, all those kind of things to help seniors that, that are declining that might be living alone to be able to manage their situation with some outside help and using technology. So these are all great services. Next. There we go. Jeffrey, I'm gonna let you wrap that up. Super. Yeah, so it, Robbie, he, he lets me know very quickly that, that I get a little overexcited and I go really fast and so I should slow down and I'm sorry about that. But I am a, I'm very much an advocate for, for us finding what works for us and being open to doing that. So I don't care if you do every single one I did or any one that I did, 
but I want you to be open to trying it out. Maybe it's about trying out what I keep my car, but I'm going to try out using Uber uh, for an evening. So I don't want to drive at night. Or maybe uh, I, I want to take a, a class once, just I'm going to take one and just pick what it is. I'm going to take the Harvard class on Western civilization, or I want to take the, uh, the Yale class on uh, World War I, or whatever, whatever is, is important to you, try that and make that, that happen. I think that's a, a great value to, to, to you and, and what you may see and what you may have the opportunity to do. I shared also a couple of times about uh, us working after age 65. And I want to share a real important piece of that. While you think about what you're going to do, it's a, I don't care if it's work or not, but that you keep doing. The more that we do, the longer we will live. The more gratifying our life will be for ourselves. My dad is lazy as lazy can be, and I've learned from him, so I'm lazy a bit too. I don't care if you do a lot, but do something, right? And that's, that's a valuable piece. Um, if an app doesn't work for you, it, feel free to call me and I'll help, see if I can help guide you through it. Feel free to call or look on their website and maybe it just doesn't work for you. So pick a different one. Um, that's okay. That's important. You will also see that there are differences in prices. And uh, when I started the, uh, the presentation with grandma, she had uh, Uber or Lyft and she was deciding which one it was. She decided based on which one was, was less expensive. Um, if I'm, if I have an extra minute or two, because they're usually only a couple minutes apart, I'll probably pick the ones less expensive, but usually I pick the one that's closest and quickest to get to me, right? That's awesome. Uh, and it gives us a choice. But if I decided after two Uber rides that I didn't like the way Uber was doing it, or I didn't think their app was working well, don't give up mo uh, uh, mobile assistance. Try Lyft. Try a different app. And there are several uh, apps that do shared ride as well, uh, which can be a social thing for you, which is which I think is also nice and an opportunity. Uh, so that's a, a, a great piece of it. And I'm a financial advisor. Before I close up, I want to make sure that I share that that's really important for us to know that everything does have a cost. This is not stuff that's for free or most of it is not for free, but most of it is very inexpensive or on a small subscription basis. So it, it fits within your budget. Make sure if it fits within your budget. And you don't have to spend everything that you have during your life. You can leave something to kids, grandkids, friends, charities, but you could spend every penny on yourself too. That's okay. You should know that that money is yours that you've earned and you've worked for over your life. And you should spend those dollars and make sure that you're making your life uh, feasible and, and, and and valuable for you the way you want it to be. Okay, uh, that's the I think that's the end of, of our presentation in, in big picture. We talked about inventing a new fit, uh, future that you may choose to work or live longer or better, how you might do it, how technology may change what we're doing so that we can do that better, stronger, faster. Farmers are not out driving on the farms anymore, but there are vehicles moving automatically on the farms, right? So we've changed quite a bit each time. And I want you to try something. And, that, and maybe, uh, I don't know if we've got everybody on the chat to say what they might choose to do, but if, or if they have a question on it, that's okay with me. I'd be happy to share that. Uh, that's actually a picture of Dr. Coughlin, uh, who uh, he helps quite a bit with uh, all things uh, MIT age lab related. He's the one who's a professor who started it and he is, famous for, for what he does, and he's done it for many years, and he's over 65 now, still doing it. We like that. And that's it, I think, last hey, slide. Hey, hey, Jeffrey, real quick, I did have a question. Somebody asked me, at least yes. Uh, and we skipped over the belt on the technology. I forgot what that does, bud. Uh, so it's, it's to help hold you up and help with transportation, and it has a monitor on it. So if you've fallen, it knows that you've fallen. Got it. I just couldn't remember that one. Thank you. Sure, that's all right. And it's yeah. so what it in order for it to do a question, I'm sorry, about the pill popper. 
Oh, okay. Pill Boxy, B O X I E. Oh, Amazon has it. There's there are no less than 50 apps. I'm not trying to point one down uh, down <laughs> the path at you, uh, but you could look for automated uh, prescription uh, dispense dispensers and also the ones that will package it and deliver it. In fact, uh, I think it was when we first started or just before uh, we started, we were talking about the, the vaccines and CVS is monitoring and managing quite a bit at both CVS and Walgreens, who you'll always find right across the street from each other, competing on price. Uh, they'll, they'll box it up so that they know what it is by day. So if you'd prefer that, then you can do it in person, but you can certainly do that on the web as well. And I love the idea of generics as opposed to the brands, just as the financial advisor, not, not over, overdoing the costs on you, but I love those kinds of apps. Okay. Yeah, there are other questions that are out there that I missed. I'm gonna assume not. And oh. Jeff, I really liked how um, you brought up several different apps. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, for those of us that just don't use apps very often, um, can you talk a little bit about that process? Because it can be a little bit intimidating. You know, some of them require a lot more information, extra passwords, et cetera. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, that's a great point and a, a great question. If we're not used to it, it's going to be new. Uh, and, and there will be a little bit of learning curve associated with it. Um, if you go and get started into an app that you've chosen and it feels too difficult, go to a different app. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, you should have a different password for every single one of your apps. Um, it's really easy uh, for, and it's hard to remember that. You can keep that on paper. You can keep it in a separate place. You can have a, a password reminder. Google offers a password reminder. Um, your iPhone does. Uh, Samsung has it on their phones has a password reminder those are secure and you should feel comfortable with those those names um, but the re reason that you want to have a different one for each app is because if they are able if somebody does come in and, and try to cyber uh, thief you uh, and they get one they're going to go the first thing they're going to go to every other thing that has your name on it and try to see if that that password will work um, yeah. so that's Jeff, can I make a suggestion? Jeff, it's Susan. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, about um, passwords. Uh, one trick might be um, to come up with a formula. So let's say you have a favorite word. Let's say it's the name of your dog, Fido. Um, so what you do is for each app or each site that you need a, a password for, you do the first three letters of that site. So let's say it's Uber. So it would be U-B-E for Uber. Mm -hmm. And then it would be your word, Fido. And then maybe you put an exclamation point or a symbol or a number at the end, maybe, you know, whatever the number is. But so you've got that same Fido 99 exclamation point. <laughs> is like the base of your um, password, but then you're changing out the first three letters for every single password you use, but it's always the same formula. So Uber would be U-B-E, so Airbnb would be A-I-R, um, I don't know what else, Netflix would be N-E-T, and so, so that way you have a different password for every single account, but you, you can remember easily the formula. So you hey, know Susan? it's going to be those three letters plus your word and number. Yeah, Susan, that's a great idea. Do you mind telling me your pet's name so I can get into all your pets? <laughs> I don't have a pet. Oh, so close. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. That is a great, great idea. Um, idea. On the heels of that, um, it was just a few years ago that I, I finally downloaded Keeper. Uh, there are several different apps, of course, that hold all of your passwords. And after, you know, 20 of them, and each one was slightly different, you know, the first letter was capitalized in this password, but it wasn't in the second one. And the next one had to have nine characters versus seven. Finally, I started using that. And now it has really become so, so easy. And 
it did take some time, but going back to what Jeff said, you know, we've got to keep learning so that we can stay sharp and stay active. And, and so as resistant as someone like myself is to technology, uh, um, it has really, um, it's been really important and it's really helped me to build my confidence and it's helped me to realize that there are a lot of tools out there that can make things more accessible. So it kind of reminds me of just using a new language. Um, you know, Spanish is certainly not my first language, but you know, when you're going through classes and you're learning something new, it is, it's awkward and it's difficult and it's, it's not comfortable. Um, but the more you use it, the more comfortable you become with it. Agreed. I, I love what you're saying. I, I, I don't, I love Susan Rogers, but I think you're a little too simple on the password space. Don't. Wow. Sorry. That's okay. I, I would say to you that there should be at least, at least 10 characters all the time. Wow. And if it's, if you have the same message, so it's always 99 exclamation mark and the same Fido, all I have to do is add the first three and I'll, it, it'll come through quickly. They, they're able to run that so fast. I really would rather see different different ones. It's okay if they have the same first three letters or a, a middle two, but not always the same way. Yeah. Maybe so. And it looks like we do have a, um, a hand raised, and I think that's from uh, Joe. So Joe, I've just unmuted you. If you had a question that you wanted to share, uh, ask the panelists, go right ahead. He's muted. Joe still shows muted, yeah. Yeah. So Joe, can you unmute yourself? I've unmuted you on this end. Joe Klein has the same initials as I have, so I'm she's, excited she's, to wait she, she's, she's changing our password right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this, that uh, Joe Klein is one of our DAPS members. She's also on the board. And uh, Joe uses lots of apps. Mm -hmm. She is better gifted at that than I am. So Joe, hope you unmute yourself and get your question out here to us. I see that Susan has brazenly posted the next webinar that Synectus, the group that we're part of, is coming up on January 19th. If you don't mind, I'll share it out loud. It's going to come with uh, from folks that are involved in real estate and involved in, in moving and care about how to right size your space. That's whether you choose to stay in the same property uh, or if you choose to go elsewhere. Uh, there are lots of uh, applications and like we just saw that might make our lives easier. Uh, changing counter height, changing toilet height, changing door width. Those are the kinds of things that go on in right sizing. We call that universal design, but the size of it, the types of uh, materials you have are all very important. And, uh, and they're very talented and they're very caring as well. And I hope that you'll consider listening to that. Terrific, thank you for adding that. And Joe, um, are, you, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Now we got you. Okay, I say one of the really nice apps that we find with Parkinson's is WebMD for medication reminders. And I take anywhere from nine to 16 tablets a day and they all are spaced like three to four hours apart. And it creates a lot of anxiety. Um, and uh, I would just really recommend that for uh, anyone uh, to keep track of being on track with their dosages. You may have mentioned that, I'm sorry if I missed that when I came in late. <laughs> Jeff, you're I, muted. I didn't share WebMD specifically, but I 100% agree that's a wonderful one, and uh, it can help with that. And I would say that utilizing our phone, even though it's dispensing at the right time with the right levels, um, having that phone as a reminder for us and remembering to click it on and off, or I've done that, I've finished it, those are important pieces. And it can be tracked on there, and that can be a helpful piece. Thank Mine you, is actually hooked on my watch as well as my phone. Cool. 
And Susan, you mentioned earlier, I don't mean to switch gears too much, but tomorrow's <laughs> webinar with uh, the vaccine, um, would, if there are still spaces, would you mind um, sharing that in the, the chat feature so that people can sign up that um, I if they'd be will. interested? Hold on. One sec. into the chat. Webinar about vaccine out nine. So that's at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. And I have just uh, typed in the um, typed in the uh, link so you can register, and then it'll be held over Zoom, and that'll be um, sent to you. The link will be sent to you. Terrific. Thank you. And is that Synectus that's putting that on, or that's not? That's the National Placement Referral Alliance. Yes, I knew that. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> Joe and Mike and Lisa. Omnipresent Susan Roger is. <laughs> She's impressive. Thank you for inviting us to come speak Thank today. We appreciate it very much. Very I hope much. it was valuable. Thank you guys so very much. Guys, appreciate, appreciate you, Dad. guys. And I think we've got one more question uh, real quick. Okay. Uh, Jeff, um, I know you've got a, a, he just popped up here. So I wanted to uh, give Jeff a, a chance to, to ask a question. Okay. Jeff, you'll need to unmute yourself. Well, he typed it in the chat too. Yeah, I typed it in the chat. Okay. Okay, thank you. Use I love it. Open question. To do sometimes. We need to simplify counting one and a half L dopa tabs four times a day. Yeah. Yeah, so using the iPhone to track is great, but sometimes we don't we don't hit it when that's going on, so we have to, to adjust thereafter, and that's correct. It does reset itself usually during the next day, so you're back on track. You just have yeah. to reset the others. Um, that's but, important. But the point is, um, I have to count out one and a half tabs and use a, a splitter. I'm tired of using a splitter. Is there any way to uh, get uh, so you're, for a for a small additional fee, the uh, pharmacist can cut into the dosage properly, but you still need to. You'll end up with a pill and a half or a pill and a third, and so you need to make sure that you're handling that properly with your pharmacist. Well, I can do that with a with a. Uh, a uh, splitter, easy enough, but that's the problem. It's it's a uh, pain's taking a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a great answer for that. I'm well, sorry. Right. I agree. It's a great question. It sounds like something you need to invent something, and you'll be a new inventor for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> I think a lot of people would would benefit uh, from that. Okay, Alicia, thank you. All right, thank you guys all for joining us. Um, if we don't have any other questions, again, we really appreciate um, Synectus, um, Susan, Jeff, and Robbie. You guys were terrific, and we're um, excited to have you guys um, back again sometime soon. Look forward to it. Thank you all. Have a good day. All right, take care. Bye.